Condition in prison is crazy. Yeah. The walls are dirty. If you lean on the walls, you can get this kind of thing they call like liver spots. So your skin can get, you know, depends on the cell you're in still. That depends on the cell you're in. Because some cells are more clean than others. You have a thing called chink. What's They're that? Like, chinks like a, uh, bugs in the cell. They, they suck blood. They're blood suckers. What so the mother like, So they go in your, they, they, yeah, they... Really? They, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. The first time I ever met them. I, when I was living in Jamaica for years, I never heard about chink in my life. Chink? Yeah, they call it chink. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Good day to you, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct central London or central as you need to be, could be, or want to be. Hold tight, all the regulars, you know who you are. For all the good reasons you're tuning in, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. And uh, to everyone who's got the Television app, you're ahead of the game. Big shout out to everybody. Download free iPhone and Android for your sins. Yo, we're inside the place. The camera's on. And if you're listening, big up yourselves too. We have a gentleman inside the place on a very serious topic of uh, street culture underworld for a very long time. This man has been championing the youth. Um, bringing his story to the forefront uh, and uh, yeah from the ground up created this awesome book if you're not watching and listening I'm holding the book it's called Incarceration Jar a self-reflective analysis Incarceration J-A 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 stands corrected Stephen Graham is the voice you hear big shout out how are you my brother I'm good family I'm good <laughs> bless I'm good thanks for having me mum Thanks for coming through, ah, it's man. It's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure, bless. We have bucked a couple of times now, and it's yeah, always a have, pleasure. <laughs> we have indeed. We have indeed. Yeah. Um, and getting into the book here, mm-hmm. the the demeanour, the personality, the charm of Stephen Graham, it reads a far cry from what used to go down back in the day for yourself, my brother, particularly with this book. I mean, what, a, what an insightful, incredible mini-life that you, you've had in a, in a yeah. big tapestry of craziness, happiness, sadness, crazy. Yeah, it's been a roller coaster of a life, bro. Mm. Been a roller coaster, roller coaster, definitely. Mm. Do you feel like, do you feel like on reflection, like talking like this in a, in a situation where clearly, you know, we're dealing in street culture here majority of the time. Yeah. Do you feel like from an outsider's perspective, you've seen the ins and outs and, and you can now sit back and think to yourself, wow, thank God I'm here. Oh, most definitely, man. Thank God I'm here and thank God I'm alive, yeah. And thank God I'm sane too, you know, because um, streets is, you know, as the streets, a lot of youth have lost their life to the streets in many ways, you know, physically, mentally, psychologically, you know. So, um, yeah, thank God I'm here, man. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's get into it. Let's dive right in. We're going to get deep into this, the criminal underworld. Let's begin. Where did it all start, my brother? Where did it all Arrived mm. from it's my from my circumstances, it mm. derived from my traumas. Is my home mm. as a little boy, a young boy. I was um, eight when I really, really know, acknowledged what was really going on in my life. You know, my stepfather was a bit of an abusive guy, well, quite a very abusive guy. You know, um, and um, that really had an impact on the way I acted and, re- and reflected. And because as a young person, I wasn't one of the young people who talk a lot. So I do always encourage young people that I work with now because I do a lot of mentoring now. I work with young people now, and I, I always encourage young people. You know, talk, find someone you talk, find someone you can speak to, who you can find in. Because it's really important to um, express yourself. Because when you hold all that anger inside, that, te- that pent up anger can come out in a very, in, in, you know, because it depends on the individual, can come out in a good way, can come out in a bad way. But, you know, unfortunately, it depends on your environment and, and the situations that, you know, going around you. For me, it came out in a very bad way. You know, uh, it came out very, in a very aggressive way. So from young, I had a lot of anger. Mm. You know, I was a very angry child. I was I remember seeing a psychiatrist when I was eight, but I didn't know what a psychiatrist at school. This lady, this lady sitting down talking to me, and you know, I'm just kind of playing words on her and playing like playing just playing games on her. But how would you be playing games? What is there? Is there yeah, certain like, mindset she's, you she's asking me questions about myself, my life, my family, home, how things at home. I'm saying things great, everything's you know, you're not okay. you're not telling her the truth. You're just playing games on her. You're just playing her games on her because 
You know, you kind of grow up in that Caribbean home where you don't talk to, you don't tell people what's going on in your life, neither. Do you get me? Is that is that is that a cultural thing? That yeah, it's more yeah. of a cultural thing. We don't we don't really talk about our, mm. our personal things, which is a it's a it's a it's a bad thing as well. At the same time, it's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. because you know, again, not much trust in the system. Certain ways, you get me. So yeah. personally, I didn't. Um, I grew up not really to talk too much about what's really going on in my personal life. Was your mum and dad together at the time? No, nah, my my mum was my stepfather. Okay, yeah, my real father wasn't around. My real father actually went back to America. Okay. Mm, so it was my stepfather still. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah. So that kind of escalated till I started to go to high school. Then I started getting myself in trouble when I was at age 11. I started getting myself in trouble a lot. Um, I was in a lot of trouble at that time. I was kicked out my first high I went to four high schools, in fact. Yeah, I was going really? to high school. Yeah, I got booed out all, high, all my high schools for fighting and different things. Fighting? Mm, fighting. Mainly for, fighting. Fighting. Uh, they said I stole something from a teacher, which they said I said it. I, I'm sorry, I did it. They said mm. I stole something from a teacher, but that was a part of the reason why I got problems, but I got booted out finally from Hampstead High School as well because of fighting. I was kicked out of John Kelly Boys, Hampstead, Elston and Queen's Park. Jeez. And then the, the, the home, the social... Was not social service. Uh, what's it called again? The the educational welfare officer said there was no school wants me. No school wants you. Mm. Well, that can only that add value to your aggression. Yeah, hundred percent. Because remember, you, I'm not having a father with me as a little boy. There's a rejection in it. Feel of rejection. You know, my father's not around. There's a feel of rejection. Then again, you've got like you know, um, my stepfather being a very abusive guy. So I'm feeling a feel, I'm feeling rejection there as well because like, there's no real love there for me. You get me? So there's a lot of rejection I'm going through. So when I think about it, I will. I, I went for a lot of rejection as a young person. Mm. So my actions as well stem from a lot of rejection too as a young person. Psychologically, I felt rejected. Well, not I know, at that time I didn't really acknowledge how I felt. Do you get me? I'm just really mm. playing out my emotions. But when I look at it as a more mature individual looking back on it, especially working young people, I acknowledge there's a lot of rejections mm. in my life where I still had a. Was a, was a key trigger mm. to me. Do you get me? So, um, yeah. You fail, failed in most part. You failed by the by I felt the system. By, I, I felt by the system. I felt by um, loved ones. You know, my mum, as much as my mum was amazing, she didn't know what was going on. Like I said, I didn't really talk much. I didn't mm. really tell her what was going on. So I would hold my emotions from what my stepfather would do to so where he abused me and, you know, hit me and those kind of things. My mum was not around. I wouldn't tell her. So... I kind of picked up his attitude. They say a fear is a fear until it becomes proven a fact. And they say, you know, an abuse becomes abuser. I think I took on that same characteristics as him. Really? Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that stands I, about, right? I took on these characteristics because I, in, school, in junior school, I started to do the same thing, like fight in school, and, you know, or, or, say, or do something, or hit, hit someone and say, I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get me? So you copy those I, actions, yeah, when I got that's away, right. When I got away with it, it kind of stemmed from, it kind of, grew with me. So mm. in high school I started doing the same kind of thing. But I did on a bit more deeper scale because I was on the streets at that time. I was like I was like 13, 14 when I started running from home. You know, like it really my thing in my life really spiraled out of control still. For that time, because there's a lot of people from out of out of the country, out of London, that would appreciate this. What was what was street life at the age that you ran away from home or you were out on the streets doing what you were doing? What was what was the feeling like? What was the energy like? What was it like in y your neighbourhood? What was it where, where you were going to? Exp describe that. Well, in my neighbourhood, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of single parent families in my neighbourhood. Not to mention we had a lot of um, there was also just a lot of young youths had their own problems. Mm. So we had, we had a bunch. Of, there's a bunch of young people I used to hang around with. You know, we get up to no good at times. Mm. But it was like we just felt really comfortable with each other as well at the same time. Mm. Do you get me? And then. Um, Again, when you're you're all young and you're not really fully mature mentally, and understand you know psychologically what's really good for you from what's not really bad for you, though you may know it but you don't really understand it, do you get me? To mm. grasp it is them same individuals will give you a bit of um, say encouragement in their, mm. from their views. Mm. You get me encouragement to you know we go face we do things, but and likewise I'll give them encouragement. I won't say that no one actually rude over me or told me what to do or you get me. We we tell each other what to do, but. When your minds aren't really fully, not say mature, I would say we're not fully, we don't, we, you don't fully comprehend what is actually beneficial for you. You know, you've got a false sense of loyalty, and I'll call it a false sense of loyalty in the sense that you know, you're loyal to your friends in the, when you're young. But when you really look at it, 
things that you go up to or did, the repercussion of it and why you did it, you can't, you can't actually justify it. Do you get what I'm saying to you? So it's like, you know, the same thing to me and you was on the streets as a young, boy, a young person and you said to me, somebody violated you, someone done you something. Straight away I'm going to say, come on, let's go for him. Mm. I'm not asking you why you did it, mm. what happened. Or, you know, and these things we call it loyalty, but at the same time, it's just what's called misplaced loyalty. Because really and truly, the means to the situation may not be as detrimental and serious as... As you would think. Yeah, you could avoid some, some situations you can actually, you know, avoid. Mm. You can avoid. And these are the kind of things that I talk to young people about, the psychological way we think and our, our thinking, our meta-thinking. Why is no. that thought? Why does that? Why is that immediate? That trigger reaction. Why? Why does that exist in 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 young people, yeah. particularly when that loyalty code comes in? Oh, uh, why? I mean, every individual is different because no one, no two people think the same. No people, no two people got the same traumas. No two people got the same, you know, upbringing. Yeah. Everyone's got different things happening <clears> within <throat> their home or within society that they're faced by. You know, whether it's a society, whether it's a, a social situation. Because remember, you, when you go to schools, you'll never learn or taught about your how to deal with emotions. There is no educational system, there is no class in, so in school true. that teaches you how to deal with your emotions. You won't go into a class and say, you know, here's how you deal with your emotions when you're angry, here's how you deal with your emotions when you're sad, this, how, this how you deal with emotions yeah. when you're upset. Yeah. It's not taught in school. The school tells you everything outside of yourself, yeah. but doesn't teach you how to deal with yourself, which is the key fact of life. And with communities and families, uh, organ um, organisms be breaking down, there's not, they, you know, fathers will leave, mothers will, they would separate. You don't have that emotional... Uh, no, let's 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 teachers. even paint a, let's even paint a, a beautiful picture. Let's paint a picture of a mother and father in a beautiful home. Let's paint the let's paint the most prettiest picture. I want to make it understand it's deep in this even the communities or deep in what's going on with the young people. You got a beautiful home with mum and dad in the house, yeah. But imagine then, mum's in the house, dad's in the house. They're both working. But so when we're painting a picture of a beautiful mm. working class family. Mum's got a job, dad's got a job. One of them take a chance to drop to school in the morning. Both of them rush off to work. One's lucky enough. Or for they say one. Remember, most schools, most work finish at five o'clock. But we're gonna we're gonna paint the most beautiful image of a person mm. who can leave work early to come pick up from the school. The stuff you see on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying. So let's <laughs> let's create this illusion, yeah. But but even if you got a child, parent who come up three o'clock to pick from school, by the time you get home, five, parents does the food. Five o'clock, five thirty, dinner's ready. Everything's ready. You're eating dinner. Dad's maybe just coming or mum's coming. Whoever takes that opportunity to you know to come up normal time. The other one comes in early. How much time do you actually get to reflect on your child and wonder what the child's done for the day? How much time do you get to reflect as a parent on your own self what you've done today because you're too busy working? That's society, isn't it? So, society. It's a social, yeah. it's a social thing. We live in a very fast speed system. Yeah. I've got a chat to my book where I talk about where I talk about slowing down. Like, society doesn't, give, doesn't reward us with time to really reflect on self. Mm. So, society doesn't reward us with it. Naturally, and I say that, it's a free gift. But mm. society doesn't reward us with it. Neither are we actually... Um, Neither when you're, like I said, a pretty family of two parents, great job, things are going high. There's not much time for that child to reflect on that child, mm. even when you come home from work. By the time you don't cook the food and everything else. Hey, yeah. you can cook food and ask the child, how's things going? How was school today? But then really and truly, I'm cooking while I'm saying to my daughter, how was school today? Or my son, how was school today? That's not much. That's not teaching my child another thing that I'm going to devote my time and talk to you at the same time. True. So I'm not actually devoting my I'm doing it while I'm doing something. So then, True. even the way even how a child can actually input that information is that, like, okay, mum cares about me, but she's got to do things. So I've always got to do things. Things have always got to be mm. done. Mm. So that psychological in your thing is things always got to be done. So you haven't really rewarded that child with a thought pattern of you can relax and do and think about you. So society doesn't really give us that kind of, do you get me? Yeah, and so, so it, yeah. And now that's, a, now that's me painting a picture of a perfect home with two parents, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now imagine a child, imagine a home with just one mum and... <laughs> You know, she ain't working or she's working, she's stressed in a way, she's got bills. And so we got to look at the reality. And, you know, it depends on the situation of like families, how deep it can get the traumas that, yeah. that people face or go through. Then to deal with the emotional side of telling a child how to deal with your emotions, just nothing there. Side doesn't, doesn't reward us that. And then comes peer groups. And yeah, then yeah. the moment peer, peer groups come in, that's and where your you family... And your friend, then your friend's yeah. got more time for you to spend time with you and talk yeah. to you. And, you know, like I said, your friend may not wish, to, wish you bad, but if their mind's not maturely understanding you know, how to deal with or compose themselves in the right way, then it's going to affect you as well. So yeah. there's a lot of things that we've got to look at. When we're judging young kids for what they do, I don't really say, like, I always tell people, don't just judge a young person for what they do. I think, look at the whole structure behind the young person. Mm -hmm. You know, look at the whole structural... Uh, makeup of what that young person's going through, what they've been through, then you can actually really paint a better picture of the person. And I think when we look at society from that perspective, we become less judgmental and more... Um, 
more emotionally attached to more emotionally attached to what's really going on with individuals. So we're, we're more I wouldn't even use the word empathetic. It's more or less you're more emotionally attached because I think we're unemotionally attached to what's really going on with young people or what's really going on with even single parent families or parent families. And I think that's what makes a lot of judgment and then people feel a bit standoffish because I don't trust you no more. Mm. Do you get what I mean? So mm. I think we need to break down these barriers as way how we deal with things and really look at people, like remove ourselves from this kind of high-mindedness and stop like looking down on people for what they've gone through, what they've been through, but mm. try to acknowledge, you know, that um, there's, a, there's a deeper reason behind everything that goes on with young mm. people. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Do you and think, it's, and it's just, and would you would you say that some of it is generational, like it it score damage from one generation may score on the next, which might create well, of course. the butterfly effect that of we're course. talking about. It yeah. definitely can be definitely can be generational, mm. generational, psychological, um, ancestral. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yeah. And what a child's in a mother's womb, right? This is going on a whole different day, which I do, talk, I do touch on these kind of things in my book because I want people to understand that. Like, they mustn't, not to judge people because like, I've gone through so much I've gone through. Turn around and today, as you know, I write books, make documentaries. Oh, we're going to get into this. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Like, I do so much different things today. So I've turned my life like 360 degrees. Yeah. Do you get me? But I mean, it's, it's looking at a, 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 a woman with a baby in a womb. Imagine a woman, when you're around a pregnant woman, if you go to her, boo, she jumps, right? And the baby jumps. So the baby's naturally connected to everything that goes on with her emotions. So we got to be in mind, you got ancestral trauma that's going through mothers and children. A man could even be the woman, she's pregnant and he's arguing and he's cussing her and he's shouting her and she's stressed, but that baby's feeling everything you're doing. Mm. And that baby, might have, that baby will have traumas that they don't even know and they'll come into this world with traumas that they don't know. So there's traumas around deeper than mm. some people looking at. Do you get me? Yeah. So there's a lot of things to... to so when you talk about, you know, can it go from period? Of course it can. Mm. It's, it's, it get, this whole thing gets deep. Mm. It gets really deep. And it's, but like I said, we're not, the system doesn't teach us how to deal with emotions. It? It's not something learned in schools. No, no. We learn everything about, you know, this education of, of you know, H, uh, um, RE, religious education. We learn this about geography. You learn about maths, and English, and science, and everything else, but you don't learn about yourself. Don't, everything outside of you. But that street you. culture, right, just going slightly staring back to that, that street culture... You learn a lot more. I, I would argue that the intelligence on a lot of people streets. on the streets, for real, is the real, real... Well, of course it is. It's far, I've got a degree in medicine. Then. I've got a degree in medicine. When I came out of prison, I went to university. Mm. I've got a degree in medicine. But a degree is one thing. Agree, when you look at a circle, a circle is what? A full professional circle is what? 360 degrees, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I've got an agree, a degree. What's a degree? Like, with all respect, I'm not saying it's not good to have education, but mm -hmm. a degree is a degree. Mm -hmm. 360 degrees. So a degree is a degree of a lot of information you threw at me and push it into my mind. But the road will give you more education. That's why you could, I, I, the road will give you more education if you really acknowledge your open eyes to the streets than actually when you're just in a university. And mm -hmm. that's not being disrespectful being a university. Cause I've got a degree and I'm proud of my degree that I've got. But I'm saying the point that if you understand when a, a person on the road, they can be more in touch, psychological, to a lot of things going on. It's only because their senses are not used in the right way. Remember, there's nothing more stronger and more powerful than actually energy of anger. Mm. Anger is one of the most powerful energies you have. Mm. But if it's not <laughs> if it's not channeled correct, of course it's detrimental mm. to yourself and others. Mm. But a person who's like myself was a very angry child growing up, but turning my anger into a very into something beneficial, I've learned to channel that same emotion. You know, when you're angry, you can actually grab at every like. Every fibre of your body stands up and when you're angry, every hair stands up, everything, mm. every cell wants to, every cell starts shaking, your whole body's, mm -hmm. right? It's a really powerful energy. Mm -hmm. But when you can turn that energy, when you can create that same energy, but create that energy in a positive way. So you don't now need to that, create that energy when you're angry, you can actually create that energy when you're happy. But use your body, same fibres, same, same, everything stands up, but you can direct, channel that energy to something positive. Mm -hmm. who, can, who can stop you? Yeah, 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 yeah. But society doesn't teach you about how to deal with anger and emotions. Again, back to that. How We're not rewarded. How angry, how angry would you get? I mean, how angry were you at your levels when, when you were younger? Yeah. My anger levels were really angry at times. At sometimes I'd be so angry that so I'd get black eyes. Really? Mm. Really? I used to black eyes sometimes. Oh. I get nosebleeds. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Really how, I literally get black eyes. I could get angry sometimes and so I'd drop. What? 
Was that stress as well? Was it, I mean, it's quite stressful out there as a youngster. Like, it must have been quite stressful on the street. Yeah, it was stressful, but at the same time, when you're young and you're misunderstood, or you will misunderstand yourself, shall I say. Forget about being misunderstood about people, because it's not about religious people like this, it's about yourself, about learning to understand who you are. I say when you misunderstand yourself, it can be stressful, yes, but at the same time, you're not actually seeing it as stressful because you're not thinking about emotions. Mm. You're not understanding your emotions. Mm. So it's more excitement as well. Adrenaline. Yeah, excitement. What's, what's more powerful than adrenaline? Yeah, 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 nothing. Uh, I can't... Adrenaline, anger, these are powerful emotions, but channeled in the wrong way. Channeled when you channel the them way. in the right way, they're creative. Whoa. They're the more, crea they're the more creative, creative things ever. What was the most... Are you, okay, stereotypical question time. What was the most adrenaline rushing thing you ever experienced in your time on the road? Like, what what kind of what kind of circumstances would lead you to being totally and utterly talking about you specifically now? What 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 did you get yourself into that would have fired you up? Without implicating yourself, of course. The <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, this is, there's quite a few things that really got my adrenaline going. You know, sometimes just like a, just like, just like a situation with people could get my adrenaline really going, like mm. really, really going. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and um, the unthinkable happens, but it's it's more about, it's, it's, it's more like I said, not understanding that adrenaline or how to use it in the right way. Did, um, that's key. Yeah. Uh, power. Mm. Adrenaline power and power is something that you have to attain in the street that's a position that's a pecking order a tribal thing you you want to be the main man in a pack or you is that is that is that adrenaline that was never seeking? my desire to be the main man of the pack no with all the friends i've around i've never been my desire was never to be the main man in the pack my desire was always when i'm around to do as i want to do right you see there's difference there's 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 some people do things for the sake of like I said, I wasn't on the streets because I wanted to. I didn't just get up and say, I want to be on the streets one day. I was driven towards the streets. Mm. You know, my stepfather, when I was a little boy, when I was, I think, I can't remember, I was a couple, I can't remember, I was, I was young. Got a mum's car, about 13, I think. 14, and I had a robbery charge over me. And he goes to me, I, I really bust up a robbery charge, case before, and he goes to me, this one you're going to get caught. Technically, he's saying to me, this one you're going to caught for, and you're going to go to prison. And he hoped, he wished, he wished I went to prison. So what happened there? What, what happened there? No, my stepfather, he wished me to go to prison. Yeah, for what was specifically? Because he didn't like me. Really? That's what I'm saying. He just didn't like me. He just, he just wished I was in prison, which I, to me, that was like, a, it hurt because you're supposed to be, you know, you talk, you asked the most, technically, you made a comment to the universe to be with my mother and her kids. Mm -hmm. But you got with my mum and, you know, you can't love her son in the right way. You want to wish me to go to prison. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? Like, that's how much you hate this. He had a dishate, he had a, he had a hatred for me. Now, I don't know if that hatred stemmed back to him and my father having a, a golden blow to blow. Okay, my real dad had a blow to blow. Right. I don't know if that's anything to do with it, but whichever way, looking at it, he didn't like me. And um, See how this shit perpetuates? But you see, see how that shit happens? His oh. trauma is not my trauma, Man. though. Do you get me? So mm. I used to have a lot of anger for him. In fact, you know, there's times when I actually react, I reacted at him. I tried to kill him when I was 14. I went for him with a knife. Went for a knife, yeah? Yeah, with a knife for my stepfather. But, um, Would he disarm you or...? No, 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 no. no. So my mum stayed between us. Really? Mm. Then, she, then just when she realised something was really wrong. Did she Did she get stabbed? Mm. No, 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 no. I'm saying... Hell no, I love my mum. No, no, no. I don't mean by... It, by I mean accidentally. No, 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 no. Because, no. you know, these things happen, don't they? No, no, no. But, um... <clears throat> but, yeah, it was, um... It was just... It was a deep situation, so, you know... But it's... The reality is this, um... I feel like the most important thing is really, I just feel like in society we focus a lot on the, 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 negative, the negative things we, young people do and when they do it, they get chastised for it. When we have to really look at the reality is what drives, what drives them there and what causes mm -hmm. them to do it. But I think that's why society is how it is. There's a lot of victim, one-sided victims. Mm -hmm. Like so a person does something to somebody, the person who's been injured is a victim. And the other person is a persecutor. But then I really, when you look at the bigger, bigger picture of that, that person who's done it, he might be a victim too. There's so many mm. kids whose who's families have seen eight social workers. Mm. You know, they've got all different type of government agencies in their life. 
and that's traumatic itself. Yeah. And if you've seen, say, eight social workers and the social workers, eight social workers, um, you know, coming back to your family house, the same story again, you know, what happened, what happened, that's yeah. traumatic yeah. for a parent and a child to go through. Mm -hmm. You know, there's many things that goes on with young people. Like, we don't know the big behind the behind scenes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? There's young kids that's, that's being abused mentally, like, like myself, psychologically abused. They've been physically abused. You know, are they not victims too? Mm -hmm. Even though they've hurt somebody else. But if we look at the bigger picture... Reverse engineer it. Yeah, they, but they need the help too. Because people the help. are just seeing the car crash at the end, they're not seeing yeah. what, what caused it. What drove it. Yeah, yeah. Which I is think that's, 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 I think that's the downfall of society. We look at one aspect of things and not look at the whole aspect. Yeah. That's why I wrote that book. Well, this is the thing when we get into the book because this, this, um, to my understanding, of course, we're going to get into this now. Uh, this, this plays very much into that theory of what is what, what appears on the out uh, on the outside ain't mm. always what's going on in the inside, right? One hundred percent. Explain with with not too much detail. I don't give away too much in a book. You understand. But, uh, yeah, please break down what happened to, yeah, enable you to create and document. Uh, the book was based on my life. I, went, I was incarcerated in Jamaica at the age of 22. Incarcerated in Jamaica. Right, my first question is how the hell did you go? <laughs> how did you get in Jamaica? How did you get there? What happened? Well, actually, I started going to Jamaica when I was 15. My mum couldn't take it no more. Like I said, I was kicked out for high school. She couldn't take me no more being in England. Police were bang out to try to get me so bad. Police were always wanting me. They they came to me, said I did an robbery at the age of 15. You know, um, the robbery they said I did, the armed robbery they said I did, I didn't do, because I was actually on an ID parade with the police the same day the robbery happened. So my alibi is actually the police. That's how much the police want me. They weren't, they weren't doing their homework. How many times were you in and out of, uh, ranging from ID parades to jails to... Court. I've been to courts. I've been caught quite a lot of times, but I've got I've bust a lot of cases as well. I bust a lot of cases. Um, I was in um, I was in jail when I was fifteen. No, sixteen. I was in no fifteen. In the fifth, just so yeah, fifteen. Come six hours. Mm -hmm. I was yeah, fifteen. I was in jail, but I was in Jamaica for drug trafficking. I was drug trafficking at the age of fifteen, and um, damn, I was done for robbery a few times. In Jamaica and you, over, you over here, Napa Robbie, Napa Robbie, Napa Robbie, other type of robberies over here. I was arrested for, got off uh, most charges, you know. Um, I was charged a few times for robbery, got done for um, possession of, of marijuana. Which, uh, which sounds minor in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was um, done. I, um, yeah, so that's age 15, mum said, no, nah, you can't be here no longer, like, it's too much. This yeah. has like a weekly thing, she was enduring your actions on a weekly basis, was that? I wouldn't say weekly basis, it was, it happened regular, from age 11 to 15, it happened a lot, but... Um, but you were never home, you were always out. I wouldn't say never always home, I was actually a really good child, that's the thing about it, in home I was a great child. But you, like you are saying, you kind of end see, up that's, being that's steered a, there. That's the thing is, I was a great child at home. My mum could have no problem saying that, man. Mm. When, when, when the school would so like, when I was getting booed out of different schools, what's he like at home? she said say he was great, and I was mm. great. That's the thing is, I wasn't showing my emotions when my stepfather was doing what he was doing. I just knew I'm going to get my own on somebody out of the streets. Mm. I was running from home at times, coming back. But most of the time, I said I was in my mum's house. Majority of the times, I was at my mum's house. But there was definitely a point where... She was like, well, I can't take this anymore. Yeah, the point is because the police. I said the last time, last time she couldn't take them was when the police came to my house and said, you know what? Mm. This guy did an robbery. He did an armed robbery. Um, at the age of, they said, this is armed robbery. I was 15, if I remember correctly. And they said to me that um, I did it. But that time I was actually on ID parade in Brixton. So the time the, I, the time the robbery actually happened, so the morning they came for me. Mm. They, when they look back on the date, they said the robbery happened maybe, say, a week or two weeks ago or whatever. Well, they didn't do the math. They didn't... No, they, no? it's because the police wanted me. They used to walk on the streets and call me by my first name. Like, all right, hey, Mr. Mr. Stephen, how are you? Really? You don't know me. Like, you know, they try to, they try to mock me. Torment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but um, I'll play into their game, so I'd argue with them, and sometimes they'd come out and, you know, rough you up and that. But it wasn't wise, and then I should have just not even answered them, just let them be. You get me? Like, you're young, you're ignorant, you don't really understand. You get me? 
cat and mouse, and, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, playing games and, you, and we're playing. Um, that's what I tell a lot of people, don't feed into their, don't feed into their foolishness. Mm. Do you get me? Because they do a lot to young people and today, they still do it. Really? Do you get me? Yeah, they still do it to young people. You see them all the time stopping young people and, you know, unless they stop them. Do you know what I mean? Unless they're searching. You know, criminalising young people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, if you keep stopping a person and making a person feel like, do you get me? You only can paint that picture for them to do it if they are doing it or not doing it. Do you get yeah, me? Yeah, that's right. You're not helping to change the situation. That's just you know, bullshit. Um, but yeah, so I was 15, then I went to, then yeah, mum sent me to Jamaica. I couldn't stay, so I had to come straight back. But when I came back, um, when I came back, yeah, when I came back, I, I actually had a robbery charge on my head, if I remember correctly. I had a robbery charge on my head and I went. And then when I came back, because um, this case, case, I knew I was going to win it. Well, this lawyer said, I know I'll go, I'll go jail for it. So she goes to me, come back. And then... Um, right, so you, so this... This robbery charge was pending on you in the UK, but you were in Jamaica, or was it pending in Jamaica? No, UK. UK. Yes, I went to Jamaica. Right, okay. My mum risked herself sending me to Jamaica so I couldn't get rid of this case, because, mm. like I said, the police arrested me for robbery that I didn't do. <laughs> you get me, my mum mm. was like, too much of it. Okay. So anyway, so when I'm back in the UK, it's like, um, if I remember correctly, I couldn't stay here. Because it was just problems, so I ended up going back to Jamaica again. Mum said, "This time you got to make it work." But when I went to Jamaica, I had wars. The first week I went to Jamaica, I had a war with the with the top man's son. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh my god, um, it was all stupid as well. Was it? So it wasn't. It, 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 it was. It, it was a minor. It was like a personal. It was thing. my ego. This is my ego. I was young. I didn't understand my ego. Got the better of me. Okay. He said something like, He said something which I could have overlooked again. Like I said, sometimes a lot of us don't realize that that. One split second in your life can make a difference in your life. One second. Just a click of a finger. Just by saying something or just something... Just something you do. Just whatever, fam. Whatever. A man can say something to somebody and the wrong thing you said and it creates a problem. Mm. A man, you know, a woman likewise can say something to somebody creates a problem. Mm. Sometimes we need to learn to think what we t before we talk mm. and think before we act. You know, mm. again, we're not really taught to how to do our emotions. So how we say things. So what, was the, what, what, what happened once you had that... Altercation in Jamaica. Yeah. I, had to, I came back to England. I came back to England. Again? Yeah. I came out to England about three times in one year, three, four times in one really? year. Really? Yeah, about 15, 16, 16. Well, for different accounts of things that were just... Just keep bubbling. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stay in England. I couldn't stay in Jamaica. I just couldn't set up my mind. I was always in, always in some kind of problems. And then, um, technically, I ended up going back to Jamaica when I was 16, stayed until I was 19, got myself in crazy problems out there. Um, in what kind of problems? I had myself in a lot of problems with people in regards to like violence, and then there was a guy who saved my life one time, and you know it was a good friend of mine he saved my life. But he, he kind of we was all kind of drunk and high on weed and that, and he disrespected my brethren, and you know I, I ended up cutting him up still. Did you? Mm. But yeah, so the, I had to leave Jamaica because people wanted to charge me, but he didn't want to charge me anyway. But I just had a lot of problems going on in Jamaica, a lot of things going on. And you, so this was 16 to 19, so that's what, two? Three years, three, so, years, yeah, three years in Jamaica. So you were there for quite a period of time. Mm, but I couldn't settle. And there was a lot of altercations like that where you were in just... In Jamaica. Man, because it's only a small island, man. Yeah, 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 a lot <laughs> of How far can you run? A lot of occasions in Jamaica, then I end up leaving... Um... Did you have to go hide and you have to go in the digs or anything? No, 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 no. no. What a situation, you stand there and do what you got to do. Really? Yeah. So did, did you feel, like, paranoid, like, after a while where... No. Not really. Really? When, you, when you're young and you've got this false ego, when you're really about your thing, you've got false ego in it. It's a false ego that, you're, that you're, you, you engulf yourself with a false ego that's, you know, you can, you can handle your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't say immortal, but you understood that, you know, you can lose your life, but at the same time, you also know to yourself you're doing what you're doing. You know, a lot of young kids don't realise what they're getting to when they get into the streets. When you get into the streets, you're really into it. You're that, you, have to have, you have to have that thought in your mind as well, isn't it? Like really, I got, I allowed myself to accept that thought that I can die or go to prison. But a lot of people think that, well, a, a lot of people away from the streets would almost consider losing their life the, the, the highest of, you know, the thing you don't want to have happen. Like, yeah, no one does. Not even, not even a man on the street wants it to happen. But at the same time, it comes to the territory, isn't it? When you really accept, when you're, when you really accept the path you're on, it comes to the territory. It's like, a, it's like a carpenter accepts his tools, isn't it? Yeah. And then he's, he's good with his craft. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A man accepts the streets. If you really accept the streets, you're good with your craft. But the thing but is... Doesn't, but it doesn't mean you're psychologically correct, but you just accept with your craft, isn't it? Because there isn't... I mean, I mean, and we, perhaps we should dispel a myth at this point. Like, for the threat of your own life and the graft you have to put in on the street, 
you don't actually, you don't, you never make with, enough money. With to, the word, with, the risk versus reward doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. No matter what you do. Yeah. Like I teach young people, I went to young people today. I let them know that, listen, even a person who's working in a nine to five job in Tesco's is better off than a person who's making even 100 grand for the year. Because mm-hmm. the risk you're making 100 grand for a year, if you, if you go wrong, you're going to do like 10, 15 years, whatever for it. But it's a person working at Tesco's, in that 10 years, that you say that 10 years, you go to prison for 10 years. Mm-hmm. In that 10 years, that person's working Tesco's, even, mm-hmm. even, if, even if he or she's getting a thousand, say 1,300 pounds for the month. Mm-hmm. Number one, they build up their credit ratings. Mm-hmm. Number two, yes. they're working, they live at home with a young person, like I would say young people, you live at home with your mum, don't rush to get out. Because you know, we have this mindset where we just want to get out of the home and mm-hmm. go live with, go have your own place and hold, they're independent. Hold your role. Yeah, hold your role in home. Don't mm-hmm. matter how you feel, mum pressure or dad's pressuring, mm-hmm. stay at home because you can save more money. Yep. Give them a little change towards their bills. You save more money. Credit rating, like you your said, credit ratings rise important. up. You think about you think you think about the amount of money you're saving for the year. It's gonna, and you buy little, your little somethings at home, your little mm. mobile phones, your little this, your little catalog stuff. You get I me? Mean? Mm. You can build the credit ratings up. That if you spend ten years ten years in mum's house, when you can even say say you say five hundred pound a month mm. or six hundred pound, that thousand two hundred pound, you say five hundred pound. Keep your head down. Just keep working. Keep, listen, ten years time. That's that's more than that's more than six grand a year. Whoa. It's more than six grand a year. Yeah. This is real talk. It's See, more than six grand a year. They don't teach you at school. More than six grand a year. <laughs> ten years time, that's sixty grand. Yeah. So if you as a young person stay at home at the age of eighteen or seventeen, forget by the streets, focus right. on staying at home. Even if you work in Tesco's, and you say five hundred pound a month. Yeah, you yeah. get a grand two. You give your mum say three hundred pound for the month. Logical, bro. You can actually make much more mm. for yourself mm. than a man who's on real. Because by the time you reach 10 years and you're being at mum's home, you bring your credit up crazy. You've got 60, 50 grand saved up. Mm. 10 years' time, you're going to go get your mortgage straight yeah, away, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you're in a better position to buy on the streets. Like, it doesn't make sense logically. And the you're, you're one the of illusions the... being sold to you doesn't make no sense. And I just want to add... And that's just me saying a, a little job. Imagine if you're in a proper construction or something proper, like a real... Cr- you're laughing, bro. This conversation we're having here is few and far between. You never hear conversations from people. Like, you know, you get those documentaries on the, the crack pandemic that went down in the 80s in New York, mm. and you get some of those drug dealers that talk in retrospect about how they used to serve to people's parents and shit, right? They never have the feeling of success in their voices. They, they, they rattle when they talk. Mm. They know that the money they made was money easily lost because they don't own anything now. Like you said, the credit rating's gone. The 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 it's it, it has it comes to a penultimate ending. It's never a good ending. And they're sitting there afterwards, going, "Yeah, I did it. Well, I wish I hadn't." Do you know what I mean mm. it's never a good outcome, is it? I mean, guess get <laughs> interesting. If I could tell my life, I would have, I would have changed up my thing. But I'm a person because I've come that 360 in my mindset. Yeah. I really want to embed that onto young people. You've, yeah, this yeah, I want young people to understand. Real. Really, this is what my whole book's about. In concentrate is really my life story goes even deeper than we're talking, and it shows people. Why well, I say I analyze my life because that's why I call it self-reflective analytical view of my life because I analyze my life. I, analyze, I talk about the things I've done, but then I analyze it and break it down to a really deep core why I did it. I put my emotions in it to explain to me why I did what I did. So when they read the book, they're not just hearing me talk about, oh, I did this, fine, I did yeah. this, fine. no, no, no. Like, I did a lot of stuff. I'm in prison for murder. I've, I've done the road. I've really done the road. For real, for real. Both England, Jamaica. I was kidnapping Africa. I've really done Right, stuff. let's get into it. Come on. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, all right, all right, this is it. Okay, uh, murder. Mm. That was in Jamaica. Mm. Explain to me how how you got yourself into that. Man, it was a situation where some some guys I didn't some guys that I you know had a little problem from before. Um, a friend of theirs got involved. It's something I don't really like to talk about because I do feel for the parents now that false egos. Like I said, that false egos gone and um. I wish I got. I wish. I wish at the moment time I walked away when they started their yakking, but I kind of stood there and just stayed there while they was yakking and yakking. And you know, I've learned to. I've learned now, you know, that sometimes if you and a person can't agree, it's best you depart. You know, well, sadly, some of us we kind of we tried to. Um, some of us tried to. Like again, that's, it's that false ego, bro. I think false ego just helps a lot of people. Mm. A lot of us allow our egos, whether it's in the workplace or home or whatever, we allow our egos to, so, you know, people break up relationships over ego. Mm. You know, I don't care if you shouldn't have said this or you shouldn't have done that. No, just forgive that person, keep it moving. Do you get me? But I, my situation was where me and these guys were, that is like for me from a long time ago, you know. We were scared of me still. Mm. We had a dislike for me. And I could have walked away when it, at a point. Mm. I could have left. Do you mm. get me? 
But my desire to sit there and just say, like, you know, because I used to always walk with a knife. I've never used to not walk with a knife. Really? Like, yeah, Did yeah. you ever get guns ever? Yeah, we don't talk about those things. Okay, yeah, we yeah. don't talk about them. I got, I, got, I got arrested for a firearm. Right, okay. You get me? But they, if I, if I had gun on me, I don't do, I, I got arrested for a firearm, put it that way. Okay. I got arrested in Housen for a firearm. Right, okay. Yeah, police okay. arrested me for Housen for a firearm, mm. knocked out my two front teeth. You get me? Oh. And that's why I got, I got um, thing in my, I got, uh, I got. False teeth? Yeah, caps. Caps. Um, yeah. Mm. Not, knocked out one of my teeth, cleaned the other one and chipped it. No um, way. The yeah. police did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they said they, so they said I put a firearm on them. But that's what they say. That's not my son. That's mm -hmm. not my son. But yeah, I'm not going right. to say, you know, mm. I don't going to claim it myself. Yeah. So, you know, I, they said I did that. Mm -hmm. You get me? That's what they beat me up for. They said I did. They said I had a firearm on me. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so for me, it's like a situation where, you know... Um, so you've always you always carried a knife? Yeah, I used to walk with a knife a lot. Both in Jamaica and England, it's not something I, mm. I, I, I hide back in the days when I was younger, yeah. In Jamaica, something I always walked with a knife. It was just something I did. Mm -mm. You gave me something But I then, did. Uh, the, would, would it be the case that, that, that you didn't know, you were always constantly under guard that, to make sure that you weren't going to be jumped on or anything? Well, did other people have knives and, and whatnot on them? It's in Jamaica, it's, walking with a knife is something that most people do anyway. Did a, lot of, a lot of youths, a lot of youths use a walking knife, especially where I live. Really? You get me? So that's nothing, nothing, nothing new. Right. You get me? I took a knife and um, mm. so my situation was where I had my knife from anyway. <laughs> you mm. get me? So um, yeah, just things, just altercations happen and you know, life was taken, you know? Um, this, was this an altercation on the street? Yeah, it was on the streets. Just out of random? No, nah, like I said, we was just it was, a, it was at a location and situation, people were talking, and like I said, if I was in a more mature mindset, mm. I would have walked, you yeah. know? But mm. back then, it was more that ego, just, you know, I could still stay there amongst them and don't worry about it because I could handle myself. Well, um, uh, so off the back of that, you were... You were put in jail in, in Jamaica? Jamaica, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that like? Yeah, Jamaica prison's crazy still, because Jamaica prison, at that time I was, I was facing a murder charge, Jamaica prison was, uh, it's unbearable for a lot of people. For me, even me, it was, it, was a, it, was a, um, it was a madness still. Really? Yeah, it was a madness still. I got stabbed in my chest. I got cut in my chest and stabbed in my back <gasps> when I was in jail. In jail? Yeah, in jail. Uh, but I was, but I, was set, I was set up by the police still. Because like I said, I had a lot of problems in Jamaica. People wanted me, so the police set me up still. Wow, yeah, so they set you up mm, in the jail? In the jail, yeah, yeah. Jeez, man. And then um, and when I went to prison, I went for a lot of fights. Mm. You know, I had a lot of fights in prison. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I was, I was that type of person. I was, like I said, I was a very, very loving guy, easy, go, easy going. Mm. You know, people know me will say I'm very nice. Mm. But you know, if you get on the wrong side of me, it's a different story. You know? yeah, but, yeah. Um, I kind of... Um, I kind of went through a lot of tribulation in prison in the beginning. Mm. You know, a lot of fights, a lot of problems. But that was a blessing as well. That was a blessing. And I, I, I thank God for what I went through because it allowed me to humble myself. Because mm. when I never had nothing, it allowed me to turn into me and to really ask my questions to myself. Why am I going through these troubles? Mm. Why, am I going for, why was I going through all these things? Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time in prison reflecting on me. And that's why mm. I really found time for myself to really look at my life. That's why I say, going back to what I said earlier, we live in a very fast-going system. You know, I'm chat to my book, I talk about slow down. Mm. I had time to slow down in prison and relook at me and mm. analyze myself mm. and decide that, you know, I, I knew this wasn't for me. But, um... Talk to me about the conditions in there. Like... Condition in prison is crazy. Yeah. The walls are dirty. If you lean on the walls, you can get this kind of thing they call, like, liver spots. So your skin can get, you know, depends on the cell you're in still. That depends on the cell you're in. Because some cells are more clean than others. You have a thing called chink. What's They're that? Like, chinks like a, uh, bugs in the cell. They, they suck blood. They're blood suckers. What so the they mother? Like, so they go in your, they, they, yeah, they really, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. The first time I ever met them, I, when I was living in Jamaica for years, I never heard about chink in my life. Chink, yeah, they call it chink. It's a blood sucker, they call it it's blood sucker, it's a parasite, it's a parasite. Damn, and they had them in the cell. So, some cells depends on some, like I said, I can't say every cell. Hey man, I know but, enough chinks out there to yeah. be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's like, it, it was, it's it, they're these little, they're like, they're actually little white, they're like little white, yeah. white is when they get brown and red. Because they suck, Cause they blood. suck your blood. Yeah. So they um, yeah, I got bit by quite a few of them. Depending no on how I was way. in. 
Well, of course, you know, mosquito, you have... Doesn't that create, like... Cockroach. A, a viral, kind of, because you, they're jumping from people to people. people. Yeah, I, that's what I used to think to myself as well. Mm. But it's just, it's, just, um, it's just, it can be very nasty, but there's no toilets in your cell. In prison, there's no toilet in your cell. You actually, you actually like this, you know, like these big bottles, the fizzy ones? Yeah. you got to cut a hole in the top part here. Yeah. And open a flap. You got sticky penis in that. No way. Yeah, yeah, you piss in that. And they call it a piss gal. No. And then you got sticky penis in it and piss in it. Wait, what about if you want to shit? If you know shit, that's even worse. Yeah. You got you got shit in a plastic bag. No. Yeah, yeah plastic bag. So you got a plastic bag on the floor, line it with newspaper. Yeah. And shit in it. But if you got runny shit, then you're in problems. Then you're in problems. But the problem is again, the deeper thing that goes in there. If a man don't like it, if you look at it, say if you, in Jamaica, no two people can look at cell. It's one, three, five, and more. No. Yeah, because two people say you can do homo shit. Yeah. You get me? So only one to three to five. Now the thing is, if you're okay with me in the cell, me, you, and somebody else in the cell, but we don't like you. And I said you can't shit, then you're in problems. You if we, can't shit? If I said you can't shit in yourself, then you're in problems. Because then if I pull out a knife and you say you can't shit, then you're going to have to hold your shit throughout the, from lockdown to next morning fly up. And imagine if you got locked down, we got two lockdowns, we got two fly ups, fly up first thing in the morning, I think about, I can't remember what time it is. Mm. Then the second fly up, about 12, one, lock back down about one, one, two. That to, from two o'clock right back to next morning, mm. you've got to hold that shit. I've literally seen people shake. Like, you know you're shaking? Yeah. Your body's sweating everything because your enzymes are going in your body, isn't it? Your body's yeah, yeah, going... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you want to shit and you can't shit. Because oh. I might say, you shit, you're, I'll stab you and kill you. God, bro. Like, it's humane. It can be humane. Some people can be cunts in that place. Really? Yeah, yeah. Have really. you seen it happen? That... Yeah, yeah, of course. And they... I've seen people have to hold their shit. I've seen people hold their have shit. Have you had to hold your shit before? Are you mad? <laughs> like, I can boldly say it in my book, no man could say I'm lying. <laughs> in class, Jay, tells the truth. I have never been held, never been told to hold my shit. Or, or sleep on a grill. Is that a pecking order? Is that like a, an authoritative, you know, uh, pecking order? No, it can just be a man that's been a... Just remember, a traumatized... Tra prison's a traumatic place. Mm. It's full of traumatic people. Some people just want to let... Some people, being they've traumas, they've been bullied all their life. Mm. Or whatever. They come to prison, decide to be psychopathic, killed someone in prison, they never come mm. out. So mm -hmm. You might go in prison for, say, a year. Someone bullies you and you end up killing them. Now you're never coming out of prison. Now your mindset's changed, your life's changed, and you become a real bully. Mm. So if many things happen. It will just be a man who just wants to be cruel. Just, mm. They're just a cool guy. Because they're want. in the mood for it. Yeah, that's just it. Like, oh, just if it's entertainment, you're in prison, you're, you're locked up, you're entertainment. Some people, yeah. I've seen people sleep on a gate, on a grill. You know, like on a, on a, on a, on a grill, the grill door. Yeah. Because in Jamaica prison, it's not like. Um, you say like cross, got, cross, 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 that kind of grill? No, nah, like straight grills, so straight bars. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you don't have a. You, every door is locked with a padlock. It's not like over here where you got. You know, Drink, Shut the doors, yeah. psh, everything yeah, shuts yeah. at one time. Nah, it's it's individual padlocks. Now, I've seen people stand up on the grill, like, mm. and man said to you, don't, like, not in prison, I said, this is more happens in jail, though. My yeah. man said to you, you can't stand, you can't come on the floor at all. So you, you have got, to stand, you, yeah, on you stand on the grill all night and hold the grill. I've seen people hold the grill all night and sleep up there. No way. Yeah. That's just torture. Yeah, yeah. I've seen, I've, listen, Jamaican prisons, a lot of people say, oh, I've heard people say, oh, the man can't do me that, bro. And three or four guys around you with knives and they tell you to do something, you better do it. Mm. I've seen people like, like in the cell, because it's hot, Jamaica's a hot country. Yeah, 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 so yeah. even this happens in prison too. It's hot and the man will say to him, yo, you know, it's hot in that blood. And like, if they don't like you in the cell, they single you out and say, yo, I might say, hey, kill a girl. Take out a t-shirt, I'm hot in that blood. Mm. And you know what time it means? That means you spin propeller. So you got your t-shirt and find the whole cell and shake. That's all you're doing. Yeah, all you're doing, all for hours. You're just using really? that t-shirt, yeah, spinning your hand like that. That's all you're doing. Yeah. Hours and hours. Yeah, make everyone cool. See, you want drill, drill uh, exercises? There's one for you. Yeah. <laughs> so Jeez. That's 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 people go for torches in prison. I've uh, seen. Uh, 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 how long were you in? How long were you in? Eight there years. For? Eight years. And Dude, eight years. you put up with eight years of that shit. Yeah, eight years of no, no. Yeah, eight years. I go to it. I want to go to it. Yeah, they're very like. <laughs> and I say that in my book, and I say it boldly. You no know, man made me do that. I'm not in the saying I'm both away. I'm just saying with pride, man. Yeah, like I helped my own in prison. Clearly, the English you, right. I, the English you, I helped my own in prison. Put that way, I helped Bro, my own in prison. I mean, and it wasn't just because I was a badness either. It was also because I learned to love me. I learned to turn my life around. I think when I turned my mindset from being such an angry person, mm. I realized I won a lot of people over. Mm. What you think? So, so, so positive energy is yeah. influential in those places. And do they see? <coughs> do they see that as a weakness, or do they see it no, as? No, 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 no. Because you know it's. I came with a. I, I feel like I feel like I feel like God was with my sin as well at the same time, because I came off with um, as much as people knew my my respect started happening still because I was fighting a lot. You know, I got cut my finger and then, you know you can see here. 
He should show me, yeah, he's cut his fingers up. Well, no, I didn't cut my fingers, people cut it. Oh, people cut it? You're coming at knife, innit? You've got a fight, innit? I'm going to extend Man, it. dude, when so, the knife's coming at you, just out of curiosity, because, you know, I, I know, you know, there's always time, and I hope that never comes towards me. But um, when your adrenaline's going, you're not even feeling what that thing is, it's just coming at you, you and you're just, just trying, trying to react. To pretend, yeah, it's just reaction. Innit? Yeah. So, what? Um, I want a lot of respect because I was fighting for myself. I was fighting a lot yeah. in the beginning. You know, after a while, people said that this guy's crazy. You know, he's crazy. He's leaving alone. Because you know, if you don't, if you don't, I, I just, just people kind of liked me after a while. They just saw that I was, you know, because I wasn't really that guy to have it. I wasn't like no one. You know, you you really know yourself when you're by yourself. Did they think you were crazy? Um, not crazy in the sense of crazy, but they thought I was crazy because I wasn't backing down. So okay, I mean, that makes sense. Crazy because yeah, yeah. I wasn't backing down. You they just, thought you're crazy, like. You want to, you have a death wish. You were the last man standing. But I would rather be killed than actually live to someone else's yeah. dream. That's me. I've always been that guy from a younger. I've never been controlled or rude. When I was just being South Kitty with all the guys and as a youth growing up, every area I hanged in or I, I, I afflicted in house and storm or whatever, if I was in South, wherever I was, I didn't like to be told what to do. Mm-hmm. I've never been that guy that likes to be told what to do. Mm. Like, I can't, I'm, I'm cool when anyone wants to be a leader of whatever, but don't, you can't leave me. Mm-hmm. Just, that's to be my mentality. You can't leave me. I've always been the person that wants to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And that's how I've, I'm, that's why, that's how I'm today. Even when I work with young people, I don't just care. I don't just, no one can't really tell me to do it their way or just, you know, in mm-hmm. a sense of, in a sense of, when I say do their way in regards to like, for instance, you know, don't work with these set of use over there because that's a different area, that's a pagan. I don't care about all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I, if, I'm, if I'm passionate to do something, I'm going to do it because mm-hmm. I'm doing it from my heart. I, that's just been my mentality from younger. If I'm mm-hmm. doing it, like right now, I write my book. If I'm determined to write a book, I'm going to write it. Yeah. That's what I said to you about, going back to what I said about anger. If you transfer your anger and all, the, all that adrenaline that you have and you put that in a positive, you can do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You can achieve anything you can achieve. I didn't, I made 19 documentaries, wrote a short movie, got an Yeah, yeah, this movies. is the other thing. I mean, we are, we're, we're on the, we're on the top of a hill of, of making something very much um, exclusive for ourselves yeah, as well. Of course, bro, you know, of we're, 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 uh, we're definitely yeah, bro. We're in make business. Happen. Like, um, you, you, you have got, to, you have done a lot you, of documents you, You've got as well. to have that drive to mm. do what you want to do. You yeah. get me? And I think that's with me. I have, I've always had a drive when I was young. I just didn't understand the energy I had. And mm. I think a lot of young people out there have that same drive. They just don't understand it. They just don't use that same energy in the right way. They're channeling their energy in the wrong way. And they keep focusing on the wrong things in mm. regards to like their anger and their emotions. And this is what I really want young people to do. You know, even the young people, adults as well, because you got a lot of grown up adults who got you know they, they their energy is not in the right way. Mm. And for me, it's beautiful if other people can align themselves to do, you know, what's best for themselves or what's mm. really good for themselves. And that's really what my whole book's about: trying to educate people that, you know, align your energy to do better things for you. Yeah, be more creative. It may not make you a millionaire. It may make you. You know, it may not make you the most famous person in the world, whatever, mm. but it's going to make you the best individual you can be. Yeah, Because you're right. doing what's great for yourself within. Yeah, that is so important. It's an important thing to factor in because we all have those days, don't we? We all, yeah. you know, just... Sometimes people get in the way of their own journey, yeah. <laughs> don't they? Mm. You know, and silly little influences, things come in. Check the people that are around you. Mm. Check who's really got your best interests. Who was there when you were down? Who was there when you was being you normally and then all of a sudden you've got a successful thing going on you know you've got a, all these things really contribute to you know the, the circle of people and, and the energy that you emit in it yeah 100% but the most important thing even though you might have the best people around you or the best people or the worst people around you is who are you for, who are you to you mm. you know who are you to yourself and that's the most important thing because even if you have someone around you who's not good for you and you know it all falls up because everything comes to part everything, come, everything comes to light in it mm-hmm. but it's reality is who are you though? Do you get me in this whole thing? Because they will come to that and you and them will fall away. But who was you within that process of when they felt, when that person you know fell away out of your life? Was you always being real to yourself? Because mm. a lot of people understand about how important it is to be real to themselves. Mm. It's true. Yeah. That's why it's about transferring that energy from negative to positive and really understand who you are, what you are. You get me? Yeah. Um, and whether it's past experience and um, you moving on and. Uh, making the better of a situation that came through. Combine that with your determination and drive. He's very correct when he says anything he puts his mind to, he does, because he fucking does. I've already seen it in like the small amount of time I've known you. Um, I think that is a, such a credit to mm. your mission brief. It, it, 
to even make a book and be honest with yourself and create that book with as much integrity, that takes a lot of determination. Yeah, 100% does. Because a lot of people will say they want to do things. You've got many people out here in the world who always wish to do things. You say, I want to do this, I'll sell that, but don't do it. Mm. And it's a sad thing about it. We live in a world, like I said, doesn't, doesn't reward us with the opportunities to be the best we can be. Yeah, because, for real. I mean, think about it, passion. People do things, most people don't live their passion. They, they have a good job, have a good career, but yeah. they don't know their passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you can make a million pounds, but you're not happy with your million pounds, or you still wish, oh, I want to write a book one day, yeah. but you never get around to do it, but you're, you're a millionaire. Yeah, you know, yeah, I want to yeah. I want to do this, I want to do that. You know, one day I want to go even say, hey, I want to go to the French Alps and ski. Mm -hmm. But you never get around, because you, you, you're you young, you want, you're, you're passionate about skiing. Yeah. Hey, I was passionate about, talk, about you know, um, Torval and Dean back in the days. <laughs> ice skating, I want to do ice skating. But you've never gone and done it. Like, that's go and do your passion. Go do your passion. <laughs> do Channel... the, that's a whole school yeah, oh, come on. Oh, come get... on. Channel your energy. Do what yeah. you want to do. Like, the reality is people need to really... That's your happiness. Yeah. Find your passion. Yeah. You get me? Channel that energy of passion. And a lot of people, we're not, we're never... Like I said, we're not rewarded that. Yeah. Well, know? money becomes in, in, insignificant when you've got your passions in front of you. That's it. You become I mean, real sergeant yeah, your what passion, you Your passion becomes everything. I mean, of course, yeah, we need money to start, we live in everything else. Mm. But your passion is so passion was gonna keep you healthy, yeah. happy, keep you. It's an internal thing that money Channels can't you. buy. Yeah, money can't buy that. No, it's right. You can't pay for that passion. You can't ask a friend, "Hey, lend me a bit of your passion." You get me? You can't say, "Listen, I'll give you a thousand pounds if you give me some passion for today." Yeah, that's the knowledge right there. That's that's you get cold. Me? You can't say that to True. You can't. You can't. You can't. I can't say you get, get a girl. <laughs> get a grad if you give me some passion. Like don't wait. Like <laughs> no, you got. To, you got to channel your own. You and get me? and just to add value to this and your skill sets, you you you. Travel the world, documenting. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've learned how to video, edit, camera, mm. present. You, yeah, you yeah, like. Yeah. We're getting in some shit ourselves for the yeah, television. Yeah, yeah. Going, you know, we weren't going to say too much, but you yeah, hold, yeah, hold yeah. fire, hold fire. Um, yeah, and all of that is just it bleeds mm. determination. because yeah, I know exactly how that feels. Hundred percent, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. You just, you just, you just need to have the, the, the you know, like I said, that love for self, man, to want to do and achieve certain things. You mm. get me. And that's, I just think it's important that people really look into themselves, you know, and, and you know, when you stop judging, stop judging each other, stop judging, you know, I'm not saying we can't, if you need, if you want to judge someone, don't do it to put them down. Mm. Like, do it to, to more uplift them. Like, if I'm going to say, hey, like, you know, Killer Killer, that ain't great what you did, you could, but you could do this. Mm. Well, but find a way of saying it better. Does that make sense? So I'm not saying you can't. Look at something someone does, but don't put them down in the process. Yeah, articulate we, it Yeah, wrong. yeah, articulate yourself. I think mm. we spend a lot of time in society putting down people, putting down people. Like I said, there's always a victim. One person's a victim, next person's a, prosecu a, a, a persecutor. Mm. But that's not true. Do you get me? Sometimes the person who's a victim, yeah, they're a victim, but there's also the person who's, who's done what they've done or doing what they're doing, they're also a victim too. Mm. Do you get me? This, how, how much patience do you have or how much, or how much do you desire to really understand what that person's going through or why they did what they did? It's compassion, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's just an understanding. Yeah. It's like the the, the the two to tango thing. It's, it's you've got to you've got to know both sides of the both sides of the story, both sides look, of the de the demographic. Look, do you know what happened in Scotland? You know about mm. Scotland. You know Scotland was once a very when it comes to knife crime, London had nothing on Scotland back mm, in the days. Scotland was good. London yeah. had nothing on Scotland back in the yeah. days. But what Scotland did, they re-educated the police. Everyone who everyone who works with young people and families, they re-educated police, social services. They eradicated, you know, the, the family support units. They eradicated the nurses as well because they see a lot of kids for trauma who've been stabbed. And mm. they eradicated people how to address and to deal with these things properly. And I'm saying it's not saying it made Scotland you not know, knife free, mm. but it brought the crime rate down because mm. people had a different approach on looking on the victim and the persecutor. They didn't just see everybody as just, oh, you're just a, you know, you're just a victim. He's a persecutor. They looked at people's circumstances, look at the situation what people's going through. Reverse engineer shit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we. London, London's supposed to be the leader, but I don't know, boy. It's not, not it doesn't seem like it's leading, leading much at all, mm. because the mindsets and you know, again, the, the media itself as well portrays all this knife crime, knife yeah. crime, knife crime. When you're saying knife crime so much, you got to bear in mind as well at the same time, villainizing people that have actually you, got. It's problems. not just villainizing people; you're actually traumatizing people. Yeah. Because if you're saying knife crime, knife crime, knife crime so much, you're actually making young kids feel, I need to go out and carry a knife because so much people are carrying knives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it makes you powerful. So you've got, yeah, you've got to think about the bigger picture, the, the mm. psychological reverse, re reversal actions that's taking place. Yeah, that's So you deep. can't just look in and say, oh, you know, so everyone's got a role to play. Then you've got your grandfather Elta as well, and the rest of those kind of games. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things going on external towards the trust environment that's actually come from 
system, the system itself. Class and, system as well. Listen, yeah. make no mistake about it. Don't matter yeah, what class you're on. in, this is your fucking problem. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No matter where you live or who you are, <laughs> it's your problem. 100%. Yeah. You, wait you, know, to, you, know, you wait until your kids get you in about, this situation. Do you think about even big, big, all these big companies? Do you think about these big music com- production companies? They, they, you know, these bigger, all these bigger A&R companies, they, they're going to be putting... Um, like record label companies, mm. you know, you start so you sing a song about hey, Killer Kel is a great guy. Da, 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 da. I ain't getting a record deal. But I say Killer Kel kills everybody, yeah, yeah. He's a murderer. He's a killer. Mm-hmm. I get a deal. You uh-huh. get me. So what, yeah. what is that telling me? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you're telling me that if I sing a cruddy, I'm gonna get a deal. Mm. But if I sing about good things, I'm not getting a deal so easy. Mm-hmm. So I uh-huh. mean, look at that. Who's grooming who? That's true. Do you get me? So Hello. Who's, who's yeah. Who? Like, Completely. Let's Six say, nine as a great example. You know, it's like just. Feeding them endorphins, first of all. Then second of all, the more he does, the more he wins. The more bad, it's, ma- it's, it's yeah, teaching yeah, bad meat. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Yeah. That, yeah, six nine is crazy. It's teaching the whole... Yeah, that's a whole... It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's <laughs> crazy. But, it's just, but you can see what the system does, though. It, mm. it feeds on certain things. Mm. So, you know, when you look at the bigger picture, grand scale of things, this whole corruption that... of a, yo, you're, 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 you're guilty and you're not guilty and... You're innocent and you're persecutor, you're, 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 you're perpetrator. Hold on, no, no, no. This goes deeper than the individuals who've done something. Mm. He surrounds his environment, his family home, a team outside of family society, the, the imagery. Mm. The, there's so much things factor into. Mm. I ain't got time to be judging somebody of what they've done. I'm not saying now they're right. I'm just saying, and I'm not saying I'm going to put, I'm turning a blind eye to the violent acts they've done or yeah. the wrong things they're doing. I'm saying, what caused them to do this? Mm. Let's look at that. Mm. Let's look at the cause. The root, deep, the deep root cause of what's going on, let's address it from that angle. And I think too much of us focus on, nah, he's bad, man, forget him. Because mm-hmm. nah. mm-hmm. some people say that about me in the past, but what? Look at me today. Mm. I'm doing things that touch on the world, people all over the world. So it's not that you can't just look at someone and just judge them. It's, I took time out to effect on me. Mm. But like I said, sight doesn't reward us that. Mm. A lot of people, unfortunately, ain't, and I don't ask people, I don't wish no one to go to prison and, you know, reflect on himself. Look at Malcolm X, he, look, he, he went to prison, reflect himself. But a lot of people have done it. Mandela, yeah. a lot of people have gone to prison and come out. But I'm not saying I should go through prison and, you know, come out and do the best. People should go to prison and come out and do the best. What I'm saying is, while you're on road, find time for yourself. Mm. Even for 10 minutes, find time to reflect on you. Who are you, what are your purpose in life? What do you want in life? What do you want to be? What do you want to do? Do you get me? And I think yeah. that's important that People need to take that, that give. Society doesn't reward you it, but you reward yourself it. Because you're a living essence of your own self. Mm. You give yourself time to reflect on who you are and what do you really want to do in life. Where do you really want to go? You get me? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think that's important, man. So important. And we can start with this book. And again, Incarceration, J.A., Inside. You can get it online. You can get it Amazon. on Amazon. Yeah, they go to Amazon. They go to our website, stephengrahamprojects.com. Fucking great. Fucking great. And this won't be the last you'll be seeing of this man. Trust me. <laughs> a lot more on the way. I was going to say we'll call it, this is a part one, but this is going to be part one of God knows how. Yeah, <laughs> the way we're it, going. <laughs> Honestly, thanks. Some introductory to man like Stephen Graham. Thank you very much for nah, passing through, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for Spreading me, that man. knowledge. Cool. Appreciate oh, it, man. I wish everyone got support the book, get the book, you know, yeah. and um, definitely help independent publications. You know, let's show that we, you know, we can do just like big publishing companies. You know, we can actually do greatness as long as, you know, people get behind it. Absolutely. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I want people to get behind it and, yeah. And also, you know, if you're a youngster listening in on this, you know what to do. Contact our kid. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, right? Stephen Graham on Instagram. Yeah. Um, we'll get all the links going and all that business. But, uh, yeah, the future's bright, brother. Yeah, 100%, man. 100%. <laughs> Big shout out Steam as well to you. Hold tight, my guy. <laughs> all day for the connect. Um, Killer Killer Podcast. Out like in was out of fashion. Take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and uh, yeah, man, check out the book, Carceration JA. Stay lucky, people. Nice one, Stephen. Appreciate it, bro. Easy. Peace. Bless.